You read the title. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty stupid, but I think it will be a fun little 200 sub special video. Thanks, by the way. So, about a month ago, assuming I released this on time in early February, I created a tier list based on how much I think each tier 2 class could lift if they were in a powerlifting setting. If you don't know, or you simply aren't a gym rat TF2 player, get in the gym, here is the gist of it. If you do know, you can skip ahead to the timestamp. In a powerlifting meet, you perform three main lifts, those being the back squat, flat bench press, and deadlift, abbreviated to SBD, squat, bench, deadlift. These are often considered the main three compound lifts, no matter what gym you go to, unless you do like a yoga class or something, I don't know. Disclaimer, this is basically all speculation based on looks and builds. There's no actual science here. Anyway, we are going to be examining the characters and try to determine how much each class can lift. So let's go in class order, starting with the boss the man himself, Scout. Scout is an easy one, really. Let's first look at his build and hobbies. He's a runner, and he's a baseball player, like me. If you know anything about runners, the weight room is not a place they frequent, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. And while baseball players do frequent the weight room, it seems more like he has a general interest in baseball, but not really training for it, and that's obvious by his build, as baseball players typically have slightly thicker upper bodies, eh, but his legs are about the same. Scout excels at speed, not raw strength. He has a weak upper body, like I said. I mean, just look at him. There is no mass there, his shoulders, his chest, his back, everything, kind of small. Though, while there isn't a direct correlation, it can be pretty safely assumed he has strong legs for his size, due to the vast amount of cardio, but also the fact that he probably trains legs more than upper body, because you want to train legs more than your upper body if you're a runner, just makes sense. Now for his gym stats. There is really no way to tell, but when scouts compare to other mercs and world geometry, it's often assumed that he's around 5'10 to 5'11 give or take about half an inch. So we'll average this out for a flat 5, 10 and a half. As for weight, I had a very similar build to scout my freshman year of high school. I was also a runner, I was a baseball player, and probably trained similarly to how scout does. However, I was about three inches shorter. My freshman year of high school, I came in at about 130 pounds. So given the height difference, I would say that scout is probably around, without weapons, would clock in around 150 pounds or so, give or take maybe seven to eight pounds. Don't worry, for you non-freedom unit users, I'll convert it for you guys. With that all said and done, let's go in order that the powerlifting meets go. With squat, followed by bench and deadlift. The squat. This is likely Scout's best lift, naturally, just based off his job description. While he definitely excels at leg-based movements and likely has great endurance, he really doesn't have all that much mass. He's a relatively smaller guy, which you kind of have to be for running the distance he does at the speed in which he does it. If I were to guess, based off his occupation and legs and build, I would say Scout can probably squat maybe two times his body weight. With the assumed 150 pounds, this means Scout can likely squat around 300 pounds, which isn't terrible. Moving on to bench, this one is not going to be great. Looking at his upper body, we can see he has little to no mass. He has weak arms, basically no chest, and while back doesn't necessarily matter as much, he doesn't have a big back either. While the Alpha Scout may have had a decent upper body, our current Scout is a wimp in that department. Knowing Scouts though, bench is definitely his favorite exercise, just like most gym rats. Any average man with a bit of time and dedication to the gym can likely lift at least his body weight and I think that Scout is no different. This one's kind of tough, and it's kind of just a random number, though based on his build, age, etc., it could be assumed that Scout can likely lift around 1.1 times his body weight, which means that he could probably bench approximately 165 pounds or so. I don't think he trains it enough to really put up an impressive bench, but I do believe by experience he could put up at least 15 more pounds than he weighs. Now for the deadlift. This one is the one that Scout definitely excels at the most. He has a deadlift build. Now what do I mean by this? He has long arms, which reduces the range of motion as you don't have to pull it as far. He's quite lanky, which gives him really good leverages, and he 100% deadlifts in the sumo stance, reducing the range of motion even further. Some of the best deadlifters in the world are big, such as Eddie Hall or Hapthor Bjornsson. However, generally having a slim build with long arms and strong legs is going to reap 
better rewards when it comes to relative pulls, meaning how much one can lift relative to his body weight. While mass does move mass, levers and leverages are just as important. This is why I can safely say, Scout may have to grind it out, get one rep max four plates, or about 405 pounds. Some of you may be saying to yourself, what, there's no way, 405 pounds is a lot. Though, realize just like any egotistical skinny guy, deadlift is one of the lifts that is practiced a lot. In addition, Scout has strong legs, and while upper body does matter, he pretty much only needs to be able to hold the weight. The arms act more like a lever. While we make fun of Scout for his lanky build, 405 pounds is not unreasonable for a trained 23 to 27 year old man. In addition, this is the age where he's probably the most athletic, which carries him a little bit. And just for fun, if he were to pull conventional, which I definitely don't believe he does often, I'd probably say he'd be able to get about three plates, or 315 pounds. So in the end, here are the numbers. Scout, in my opinion, can probably squat about 300 pounds, bench 180 pounds, and deadlift sumo 405 pounds. With that, we move on to the American Eagle, Soldier. Soldier has American in his blood. He breathes, sweats, and eats freedom. Though, he doesn't necessarily have any known sports skills like Scout does. We know he's a war vet, sort of, going to Europe and killing Nazis and wasn't told the war ended until 1949. I think I remember hearing a case similar to that. History aside, he's a thick dude with two C's. He's not necessarily fat, but he's definitely what most would consider built. Soldier stands a tad taller than Scout at about six feet tall. As for weight, it's impossible to tell, but funnily enough, at the moment, I have similar build to Soldier, though I'm a bit lankier. Currently, I'm 6 foot 220 pounds, so if I were to guess, Soldier's weight would probably be somewhere around 220 to 240. So let's take the average and say 230. In addition, he's likely in his mid-40s, though it isn't confirmed. While 40s for the average person is the beginning of seniority, a man in their 30s or 40s that weight trains will likely be the strongest they'll actually be in their lifetime, as that's around the time most people hit their peak strength. A little bit of middle-age old man strength, if you will. Now onto the lifts. Starting off with the squat, Soldier is definitely a squat savant. In fact, I believe he excels at every lift due to him being generally well built. Kind of like how he's a general class in game. Soldier has average legs, but he has a thick upper body allowing him to support more weight. When looking at the fact his legs are strong enough to support a rocket jump and the fact that he seems to be a strong dude in general, I would guess he's capable of squatting about 2.4 times his body weight after many years of lifting. This would mean he could probably squat about 4 plates and some change, specifically 25s and 2.5s added onto the end, give or take 10 pounds, which would put him at 550 pounds. Some may see this number and think that's ridiculous, but based on his size, idiot strength, occupation, and build, 550 pounds is pretty doable for a guy who frequents the gym often. Now for bench. Soldier 100% excels at bench. Not as much as another class we'll get to later, but he can definitely put up some progressive numbers. He has a large upper body, though it isn't overpowering. He has thick arms, which will help him support the bar, and he has a decent sized legs for leg drive, which if you don't know when lifting for strength, it is often best to use your legs to push into the ground to help you thrust the bar upwards without your butt coming off the bench, of course. At his height, weight, and build, I believe Soldier is very much capable of putting up four plates, which is about 405 pounds. At 230, and a good amount of experience, this number is more than doable. Maybe not by like the average person, but like I said, at his size, yeah, 400 pounds is definitely doable. Finally, the deadlift. This one I believe Soldier is good at and can lift the most, though I don't think it's necessarily his best lift. An average person is going to deadlift more than they bench and squat anyway, assuming you have no medical problems or something like that, maybe like a bad back you can't deadlift, that's obviously an exception. I think it will be a high number, he has good thickness, average legs that will not hinder him, and thick arms which makes holding the weight a non-issue. If I were to put a number onto his conventional deadlift, because he's definitely not a sumo pooler, I would say he could probably pull about 5 plates in a 25, which comes out to about 635 pounds, give or take 15 pounds or so. Could he put up more? Maybe. Honestly, he's kind of hard to tell. He's just an average dude, but he's definitely strong in general, so I think that putting up 600 pounds is definitely doable. Though, because his build doesn't necessarily help him, I think his pull relative to body weight is good due to experience, but is limited by the way he's designed. So in the end, here are the numbers. 
squat, I kind of changed the pose to 545 pounds, but it really doesn't make a difference. 545, 550, it's about the same. Bench, 405 pounds, and deadlift, 635 pounds. The man with much to say, but no one hears him, has a fascination with all things fire, the pyro. Pyro, like the soldier, is a bigger person. Now, you may have already noticed I referred to Pyro as a he. I know there's the whole gender ambiguity thing with Pyro, but for this segment, I'm going under the assumption that Pyro is a man. A flamboyant one, but still a dude. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to have to do two separate analysis. One for if Pyro were a man with high testosterone and male bone structure, and then one if with female anatomy. As they do make quite the difference, especially in lifts like bench press, with where the disparity is larger than the disparities between deadlift and squat because of the muscle insertions and... Okay, you guys don't really care. I'm going to assume Pyro is a man. Also, Pyro was a guy in the concept art, so I guess that's my excuse. Anyway, age, he's is assumed to be around 40 in relation to concept art, but we truly have no idea whatsoever. His weight is also kind of hard to tell. He wears a big old flame retardant suit. But based off his size relative to Soldier, I'd say he's basically a Soldier scaled down a bit, being about 5'9.5. And then for weight, give or take 5 to 10 pounds, I'm going to say Pyro weighs in at 205 pounds. Now onto the lifts. Squat. Pyro has some thick old legs, I mean just look at him. Well, this could be the bagginess of the suit, it's still assumed that they're quite large. He's about average height with thick tree trunk like legs, you know what that means. While weighing less than Soldier, he is going to put up some crazy numbers. Pyro is definitely the type to lift, just based off his model. There's nothing necessarily in-game to point to a major squat, except maybe the canister on his back and having to lug that thing around. And looks can be deceiving, but it's safe to say the number is going to be higher than average. So if I were to take a guess at how much I think the Pyro from the hit game Team Fortress 2 was able to back squat, I would say he could easily rep 5 plates and maybe grind out 6. This means he would be able to squat 585 pounds, give or take 10 to 15 pounds. Could he squat 600? Maybe. Does he have less than a 500 pound squat? I don't know, maybe. It's kind of hard to tell. He has a big old suit on. So he could just be a fat blob be beneath that suit. So we, we really don't know. But with Pyro's insanity and drive, uh, he probably would put up some crazy numbers. Now for Bench. Bench is a bit harder. Pyro, like I said, is a thick guy like Soldier is. However, it's obvious Pyro has a slightly smaller upper body with sloped shoulders. Though, I personally also have smaller clavicles and somewhat sloped shoulders, and this hasn't really hindered me much, so I assume Pyro would be fine, but it's something to take note of. He seems to have thicker arms, which will help with holding the bar. While arms aren't the end-all be-all with bench press, they definitely do matter a little bit, especially since bench is also a tricep exercise. Once again, Pyro is assumed to be around 40 years old, which means he would have a bit of middle age man strength. This is why, at his weight and height, I believe Pyro will have surpassed the three plates mark and will have put up a nice comfortable 335 pounds. Once again, for a man that weighs 205 pounds and has been training for a decent amount of time, we'll be able to put up pretty high numbers. While the average man can't, Pyro is no average man, he's a mercenary. While he isn't held to the standards of the military, he ought to be in pretty damn good shape. So I think 335 pounds is within range for the Mass Maniac. Whew. Finally the deadlift. Uh, this one's a hard one. He has average to shortish arms, so he likely won't excel at the deadlift. He likely pulls conventional due to his size, and while his legs will help him drive that weight upwards, I don't imagine him actually excelling at it. You could make the claim that somehow the deadlift will help with it with holding the flamethrower, but I don't know about that, you know. So, overall, I think he has an above average pull due to him being a strong person, lugging that flamethrower around. But I think he's just marginally above average. So I'm going to give Pyro a flat 500 pounds for his deadlift, which is 5 plates and 2.5 and on each side. It could be wildly different, who knows, maybe he doesn't deadlift and it's 315. It's really impossible to tell with Pyro. I could actually imagine Pyro preferring the trap bar and being good at that. But for a standard straight bar deadlift, I, I don't think so. If you don't know what a trap bar is, basically it's a bar that you stand in the middle of and you can pick it up and straight uh, pull it straight upwards. I'll put a picture on screen just in case you don't know what it is. It has many uses, but back to the point, yeah, no. I think this prediction is very reasonable. And finally, here are the numbers. 
I believe Pyro is a true squat savant, putting up an impressive 585 pounds or six plates. He likely can bench just over three plates at 335 pounds, which is nothing to scoff at. And finally, I think he can pull a respectable 500 pounds in a conventional straight bar deadlift. I know this analysis, I assumed Pyro is male, though if Pyro were biologically female, basically just take all the numbers I have and subtract 150 to 200 pounds off of each of them. Except maybe squat more like 100 pounds off that one. We move on to the black Scottish Cyclops himself, the Demolition Man. Demolition Man is a big body for sure. He is the third tallest mercenary right behind Heavy and Sniper, standing at about 6 foot 2 or so. While Demolition Man lacks depth perception, and some may think this would cause Demolition Man not to lift, you couldn't be more wrong. Maybe you didn't think this, and in that case you would be correct. Good job. Just look at someone like Blind Barbell. This man nearly lost all of his eyesight, yet can squat 475 pounds and deadlift well over 600. Back to Demolition Man. He drinks a lot, which definitely doesn't help, but I've seen some alcoholics be pretty good lifters, so I don't imagine this would be a problem outside of maybe a few select cases. Demo Man, like Pyro, is kind of hard to tell weight. Though, seeing that he is a taller man, decently well built, in my opinion, it would be safe to say that Demo Man weighs approximately 220 pounds or 100 kilograms, give or take about 5 pounds. He has a little bit of fat, but he's pretty lean for his size. Plus, look at the Dynamite Abs cosmetic, man's built. Now, with all that said and done, let's move on to the list, starting with the squat. Well, him being black and Scottish definitely helps him in the strength department. Some of you may have gasped at that, but it's true to an extent. While he is adopted, it is likely Demo Man has some Scottish ancestry in him and wasn't just raised there. Much of Northern and Middle Europe, especially with some Southern ones too, often house the strongest people when it comes to static strength, aka lifting heavy objects. He also has some sort of African descent in him, obviously which is going to help him in power output and force production. I could be wrong 100% and Demo Man doesn't have any of these traits, but seeing he is a mercenary with many jobs, he likely keeps himself in shape and any little bit of genetic advantage he does have, he probably takes advantage of it. Plus him being a strong dude probably just means he's in the upper echelon of it. Though with all that rambling out of the way, unlike Soldier, Demo Man has a pretty thick upper body, but not super thick legs. Due to him being a larger guy, he can likely lift a decent amount of weight. But I do not imagine him being a fan of squats and just kind of doing them to keep in shape, maybe even do any other variations. He probably also pref uh, prefers other forms of exercise like plyometrics or something like that to keep him agile, even with all of his gear on. This is why I believe that the Demo Man can do probably just under two times his body weight, lifting a well-rounded 425 pounds. This is just a little over four plates. He could probably lift closer to 440 or 445, or 445, 450, but I'm going to play it safe and keep the 425 estimate. Now we got the bench press. This is where Demo is going to shine a bit more than the squat. Demo Man has a relatively big upper body. This is why I think he's going to put up, well, a more relatively impressive number. While I don't think he is as strong as Soldier, and the lack of one eye may hinder him ever so slightly, I think Demo Man will be able to put up at least three plates pretty easily. I imagine Demo Man being more of an inclined dumbbell bench press spammer, rather than a flat bench press with a barbell. However, there is going to be some carryover. When he's not drunk, I believe Demo Man can put up 325 pounds, give or take about 15. 310 to 340 is Demo Man's range for sure, so I'm just kind of taking the average here. Finally, to cap it off, we have the conventional deadlift. Demo Man 100% despises sumo deadlifts and likely falls over when attempting to do it at all. Demo Man, being a man of his work, likely doesn't want to take too much unnecessary risk, so he probably prefers trap bars like Pyro. Though he may not, I mean, I never got the opportunity to ask Demo Man himself, so I'm purely speculating. Now, as for how much he can straight bar deadlift, I'm going to be a bit liberal here. I think all of his numbers are similar to that of the Pyro, he's in good shape on the bigger side, and I think he takes care of himself being more into general health and well-being rather than putting up oppressive numbers or being an insane maniac like Pyro. Because he is a big dude though, I'm going to say that Demo Man is capable of deadlifting around 520 pounds, give or take about 20. With deadlift, it is hard to be sure, I'm simply just going off his attitude and his build. There's really no way to tell. And to wrap it up, here are his final numbers. 
Tavish Finnegan de Groot, aka the Demolition Man, could probably squat 425 pounds, bench 325 pounds, and deadlift a whopping 525 pounds, being well-rounded in general, kind of like how he is in game. Sort of. Now, to move on to the oversized Slavic sandwich-eating mercenary that totes a big gun and loves his familia, the heavy weapons guy. Heavy? This guy? Ooh, he could put up some big numbers, no question. Heavy is the biggest body of all nine mercenaries. The only person who trumps him in size is Saxon Hale, who we're not going to be considering for this list. Maybe later. Depends on how this video does. Anyway, Heavy stands the tallest of all the mercenaries at approximately 6 foot 5, maybe 6 foot 6, somewhere around there, but we'll say 6 foot 5 for this analysis. Wade is a tough one. He's a big guy, and once you start getting up there, it's really impossible to tell. However, I always thought of Heavy being a similar build to lineman in football, American football. When searching up the average weight of a lineman, it typically comes around to 315 pounds. Heavy is a decent amount bigger than that, so he probably comes closer to 350 pounds. He could weigh as little as 330 or up to 370, but with his composition, I will say he weighs 350 pounds, which is 20 more pounds than his minigun Sasha. Now to the lifts. The squat. This is the only time I'm going to do this, but Heavy is such an odd case, I kind of have to. Two separate answers. I'm going to give two separate answers. The thing is, with Heavy, he's very upper body dominated, with little legs. Relative to his body, of course. However, having shorter legs in comparison to your upper body could actually be an advantage as the range of motion is much lower. While his legs look a bit small, they probably pack a punch. When originally writing the script, I thought to myself, Heavy probably trains his upper body and doesn't actually train legs. Just like most people in their 40s and 50s. Though, the more I think think of it. With his shorter legs and the fact he lugs his minigun around, he probably trains them in order to carry himself and his weapons. Heavy's minigun is 330 pounds. It's nothing to scoff at. So with hindsight, I'm going to say that he could probably lift more than anybody else, including in squats. Putting him in an impressive 7 plates, or 675 pounds. Now I said I would give two answers, right? While I was probably wrong the first time, if I wasn't, and I was correct in the fact that he doesn't use his legs all that much, I'm, which could be the case, I mean, it looks kind of like he shifts his weight back more, so maybe puts less strain on his legs, I don't really know. His squat could be high since he's a large individual, but low relatively, only being about 5 plates or 495 pounds. So it's between 495 pounds and 675 pounds, which is a pretty, pretty big range. Though I'm going to say that it is on the upper side of the scale, and I'm going to say that Heavy can squat 7 plates or 675 pounds, give or take 25 pounds. For Bench, this one is less polarizing. Heavy has a similar build to a YouTuber named J-Max Father. Well, it's a YouTuber named J-Max Father, it's his dad. His father is big, bulky, and a bit older, but he puts on some crazy weight. Now, in addition, I thought I would add this. While it isn't known whether or not Heavy is natural or enhanced, as this is the 60s and where steroids became pretty common, and plus it's the TF2 universe, I would say he could probably lift about the same as this dude. This guy could incline over 500 pounds and bench about 6 plates, which is ridiculous just the, what in the world i think heavy is a bit more rounded and when taking account the timeline i think his numbers will be a bit lower than j max powerhouse of a father with all this research done i'm going to say heavy weapons guy can bench a nice cool 545 pounds or five plates and a 25 on each side if heavy is enhanced which is possible like i said team fortress 2 universe there's australium there's all kinds of things which means this could throw all my numbers off. Who knows, maybe the scout can bench a thousand pounds. I don't know. But assuming maybe that uh, Heavy was on steroids or something like that, his number could possibly be as high as 600 pounds. Though I'm going to assume Heavy is natural as there's nothing really to point to it. I mean, you could point to his jawline, you could point to all kinds of stuff, but he's a bit older. So it's like some of that stuff is just gonna be natural. So it's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to take a more conservative estimate, which is funny, of 545 pounds. Lastly, the deadlift. This is one I've also gone back and forth on. I made a point 
in the pyro section to say the flamethrower doesn't really impact his need to deadlift as much. Likely because it weighs about 6,200 pounds. However, Heavy's minigun, on the other hand, weighs about 330 pounds or 331 pounds, around there. So I think he has a he has a little bit more of a reason to deadlift in order to pick the thing up off the ground. He likely prefers the suitcase deadlift variation, the trap bar, or just using larger plates that are raised off the ground a bit more. They're typically 70 to 100 pounds. You may have seen them in some gyms. It's just to reduce the range of motion a little bit, and just it's almost like a rack pull, sort of. It's supposed, it's supposed to increase strength more. And because Heavy's minigun is raised above the standard 17.9 inches that a normal plate is, uh, it, it doesn't really make much sense for him to deadlift normally. However, even with this, Heavy is a gorilla of a man, so he can likely deadlift over twice his body weight, and with his body weight being 350 pounds, and his need for carrying around the minigun, he could probably deadlift between 660 and 740 pounds. I'm going to go somewhat in the middle and say 700 pounds or 7 plates with a 10 and 2.5 on each side. Heavy as an animal with his size, I believe it is more doable for him. 700 pounds is in the books. So here are the final numbers as they are. Mikhail can put up 675 pounds on his back and squat it. He can hold 545 pounds over his chest lying down and press it. And finally, he could handle 700 pounds off the ground with an RPE of 9.5, making 330 pounds look like light work. I'm basically saying heavy is really strong. I mean, come on. After that mess of an analysis, we move on to the B-Fed, partially robotic gunsling and turtle and Texan himself, the Engineer. The Engineer is the smallest of all mercenaries when it comes to size, but don't be misled. This does not mean he's the weakest. Far from it. Standing at about 5'7", weighing approximately 165 pounds, the Engineer's occupation requires pure grit and gumption. Engie is as country as you get, but he's also a combat engineer. I ain't never seen no mechanic or field engineer with soft hands. The ones who build big ass machine guns? No siree. He lugs heavy objects around and beats things with his wrench. He's a man's man. Let's get into the lifts. Inji squat, just like his accent, is strong. While he doesn't have the biggest legs and isn't the biggest man in general, when it comes to weight displacement in relation to his body weight, he's going to be the winner in many regards. Like I've stated, the engineer has to lug around his buildings, which means... He has to have at least pretty strongish legs. While having a strong back is more important for a front rack hold position, he's got to have strong legs too. Engineer also got to training as he used to move 25% slower while hauling, but now he only moves 10% slower. That a boy. He's been hitting the gym, no doubt about it. Due to his stocky build and occupation, I'm going to say that the engineer could squat a little over two and a half times his body weight, lifting an impressive 425 pounds or four plates and a 10 on each side. I made sure to double check my math this time. I got this one right. Moving into the bench. The Texan may have short arms, but don't be fooled. You've likely learned that by now. Short arms can actually be an advantage in the bench press. While you can't add as much mass, in general, having shorter arms means shorter levers, meaning shorter range of motion, which means less distance the bar has to move. While it isn't an excuse, Someone with a 6 foot 2 wingspan will have to move the bar a bit further than someone who has a 5'11 wingspan, even if they were the same height, weight, and build otherwise. The gunslinger is going to need a good amount of upper body strength for, to do what he does. He has strong arms and a strong back and chest, plus just look at his hands, man. Those are strong hands. This is why even with his small stature, he can keep up with some of the physically bigger guys and bench an impressive 330 pounds. I believe this number could even be higher, but because Inji likely doesn't train like a powerlifter going for the biggest numbers possible, I mean he's only 165 pounds, he is going to fall a bit shorter than his technical potential, just like many other classes. But still, 330 pounds at 165 pounds body weight is nothing to scoff at. And Finally, we got the deadlift. Inji, while not particularly being a fan of it, lifts sumo. Now here's the thing. He does it for a different reason than Scout. It isn't an ego thing. Sumo can actually be good for working the inner part of your thighs and has advantages to picking things up, which is what the engineer does a lot. 
He may also do a healthy amount of trap bar, but I could just imagine him preferring a straight bar, like a straight. The deadlift may not be Inji's best lift. Some may think it should be, but he just likely lifts enough to be good at his job, but not much more than that. Engineer also has shorter extremities, including arms. Now, no class truly has short arms if you've ever looked at the pictures of the classes, but Inji's are the most average. So with doing very little research, I would conclude that the engineer can likely deadlift about 455 pounds sumo. However, I think his conventional would be about equal to this. I think it could actually be a few pounds higher though. I don't know. I think 455 pounds is about right. And I'm going to leave it here. So to sum up, the engineer can squat 425 pounds, bench 330 pounds, and deadlift 455 pounds. We're almost there. We're done with the power classes, kind of, according to the TF2 class list anyway. We're moving on to the support classes. First on the list is the crazed German doctor, in quotations, the medic. Medic is a weird one. Medic's occupation doesn't really require him to be the most physically fit. He, of course, is a health professional though, so even though he is deranged, he likely does something to keep himself healthy, or rather, alive. Medic, while not massive, stands at a respectable 6'1", which is definitely above average, being a bit shorter than the demo man. As for weight, just like many classes, it isn't really possible to tell, though based on his build and somewhat slenderness compared to someone like demo man, my guess would be that he falls between 185 and 205 pounds. So for this, I'm going to go right down the middle and say that Medic weighs 195 pounds. So now you know the drill. The squat is first up. Medic honestly really has no reason to train legs, besides just you should train legs. While he does carry the Medigun and the Medigun backpack on his back, I couldn't imagine the backpack weighing more than like 30 pounds, and the Medigun is likely a bit heavier than let's say an M4, which is about 7.5 to 8 pounds loaded, so the Medigun probably weighs about 9 to 10. There is really no major strength requirement. With that being said, the Medic has a thicker build than the other two support classes. He has decent legs, though this could be a little bit misleading. He wears kind of high up baggy pants, but he does have a respectable upper body that we can see. And don't even get me started on that jawline. Man's got a great jawline. But back to the point. The Medic, while not being an avid lifter, could probably lift more than the average newcomer. In addition, his age means that his knees are a bit past their prime, but... He definitely has a little bit of that middle-aged man strength, just like Soldier. I'm going to say that the Medic can squat a little bit more than 3 plates at 325 pounds. For any avid lifter, especially this size, and if you're a man, 325 pounds can be cleared. I wouldn't say easily, but it, it can in a lifetime for sure. I don't want to make it clear. Assuming you're Medic size and you squat somewhat frequently, 325 pounds is about average, maybe a little bit above. Now for the bench press. The Medic has a half-decent upper body, and while having to carry semi-heavy equipment, it is a must to have a good amount of upper body strength. Maybe not as much chest and triceps, but it's definitely nice to have. For this one, I don't really have much to compare to. He's kind of just an average guy. However, on a gut feeling, I feel like based off Medic's personality and build, I think Mr. Ludwig has at least hit the Jimbro milestone on the flat bench. However, I don't think he's gone much above this. And if he has, we're talking 10 pounds tops, if you know, you know. Though, for those not in the know, I believe Medic could bench a solid 2 plates, 102 kilograms, or 225 pounds. There really wasn't much to talk on this one, but I feel like this is just kind of the baseline. Finally, the deadlift. Medic probably believes all those conspiracy theories that the deadlift is going to break your back and you won't be able to walk by the time you're elderly. However, just like most things, Medic chooses to ignore this. Once again, Medic has the most average build out of any of the TF2 mercenaries in my personal opinion. Maybe not the average build of the general population, but for anyone who exercises somewhat frequently and takes health at least a little seriously, Medic is pretty standard. Not the exact height and weight either, but you know what I mean. There really is no way to judge how much Medic can deadlift. He has, an, he has average extremities, his occupation doesn't really require heavy lifting like Soldier, Demo, Pyro, or Heavy. So, I'm going to say that Medic, with decently long legs and above average arms, can deadlift 3 plates and a 25 or 365 pounds. 
I could be way off base on this one. I truly couldn't tell you. But with his height, weight, and build, I think this assumption is at least pretty valid, or within about 25 pounds of what Medic could theoretically deadlift. So that's it for the Medic. There we have it. Medic is able to squat a respectable 325 pounds, bench every broccoli hair croc wearing high schooler's dream of 225 pounds, and deadlift a very respectable, pretty nice 365 pounds. Okay, now we move on to the New Zealand born, Australian raised Outback Jarman, and the absolute most despised class in the game, Sniper. Sniper is going to be where we start to go downhill in terms of lift numbers. Sniper lives a pretty sedentary lifestyle, and his occupation requires him to sit in one spot, three miles away, and instant kill five out of the nine classes, as long as he waits the .2 seconds before he can headshot. Looking at his build, he is quite long and lanky. This isn't necessarily bad, his occupation requires him to be attentive and in good enough shape to make it around the battlefield, but not much more than that. He doesn't have to be super strong. The Sniper is the second tallest class in Team Fortress 2, standing a few inches shorter than Heavy, and a hair taller than Demo Man at about 6 foot 2 and a half. As for weight, being that he is on the taller side, he is going to weigh a bit more than someone of a similar build, but at an average height. So, kind of just eyeballing it, Mr. Mundy probably weighs anywhere from 180 to 200 pounds. So, just like the Medic, we go down the middle and say 190 pounds. I think he weighs a little bit less than the Medic does, but that's just what I think based off his height and build and look and everything like that. He would weigh a lot less if it weren't for his stature. Lift time. Sniper walking up to the squat platform probably makes him quake in his boots a little bit. He is sitting or standing in one spot constantly and doesn't need to be all that explosive like Scout or any of the other power classes outside of support. Plus, just look at the appendages he calls legs. They're long, which means the range of motion is going to be significantly increased, and they're also quite scrawny. Now, I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but I will do a refresher. Looks can be deceiving. Skinny legs doesn't necessarily mean weak legs. Though, with that stated, here's the thing. Skinny legs doesn't mean weak legs about 10% of the time. The other 90% of the time, I would bet money on it. I'm about to go on a little bit of a rant, so I will put a timestamp for you to skip ahead if you don't want to hear this, or if you already know. You see, usually you have two camps of people. People who believe that muscle size equals muscle strength, so they think bodybuilders are the strongest people in the world. And then you have those who believe that the only thing that matters is strength training. That muscle size really has no impact on strength. When in reality, the answer is nuanced, and just like most things, is a little bit of both. When weight training, the type of training is often split into three camps. Strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. Now, when you do any amount of reps in a set, you are training all three at once. However, there are sweet spots. Training heavy singles up to quintuples, fives, you're typically promoting muscle strength gain as you're putting your CNS and muscles into overdrive in order to lift some heavy ass weight. Around the 6 to 12 range or so, somewhere around there, you are focusing more on the hypertrophy aspect meaning you're trying to maximize muscle growth, aka muscle size. This is what bodybuilders train in the majority of the time they're training. Then you have endurance, which is often considered 15 plus, with 13 and 14 reps apparently being in the void. But yeah, training this way is very good for sports like football slash soccer, American football, boxing, MMA, etc. Having to output a large amount of force very quickly and for a long period of time, it, it's pretty good to train this way. Like I said, if you train in any range, you get a bit of everything. Though, of course, if you train heavy singles, it isn't going to be great for endurance as you quick power lift the weight and then you're done. That's it. Same thing with strength and hypertrophy correlation. You aren't stressing the muscle long enough to elicit much muscle growth. This is why power lifters often lift a lot more than they look like they should. Sometimes. Hypertrophy is a middle ground. You get some strength benefit and some endurance, though you aren't maximizing really either. And for endurance, you often have to lighten the load so you're not getting much direct strength from it. Now with all that being said, of course there's other things like set the, the time you wait between sets 
and how, whether you do a quick eccentric or not. There, there's a lot of different variables here, but typically that's the way you can break it down. Now with that out of the way, back to what I was saying originally. You have to train with heavy stimulus in order to encourage muscle strength. However, you have to do some hypertrophy training. Why? Well, like I stated, strength training singles and quintuples often means you're leaving muscle size on the table. You're not eliciting as much growth as you should. Now, muscles can output a lot. But when they are bigger, they have more potential, basically. So doing hypertrophy training to expand the muscle bellies will allow them to generate more force, assuming you accompany that with stimulus that elicits strength gains. Sorry for the rant, back to Sniper. So my money is on that his legs being skinny is not because he's a power lifter, but simply because he doesn't train that much. He does enough to stay fit, but not much more than that. This is why I think his squat is going to be in the 260 to 290 range, so average it out for 275 pounds. I could be off on just everything else, blah blah blah, though seeing how Sniper works in game shows me that his muscle strength is not his main goal, and it doesn't really have to be. Bench press. This one, man. You know, I think he's going to have a little bit of the scout syndrome. Unlike scout though, I feel like Sniper does enjoy it and does do it pretty often, but it isn't his favorite exercise. He has above average arms in terms of length, but they're not very big. He has a flat chest besides that one cosmetic, and it's just lanky in general. These type of people will often excel at lifts where long arms actually help. Deadlift, for example. Though, the bench, having long arms is going to hinder him dearly, as it's going to increase the range of motion pretty significantly. I do not believe that Sniper has hit the major gym bro milestone yet, but I think he can at least lift a little bit more than body weight. How much more? Eh, about 15 pounds more. Sniper could probably bench 205 pounds for a bit of a grinder. I've discussed this with people and some believe that he would struggle to even do body weight, and they may be right. They said the same about Scout, though I believe that that's taking an extreme view on it, and realistically, this isn't out of reach. The deadlift. Sniper does a weird sumo conventional hybrid stance called the frog deadlift stance. It's basically where you stand conventional, but you move your hands inward for a sumo hand placement. As for how much he can actually lift in this position, let's break it down. He actually has a deadlift build. He has long arms and a skinny frame, but like I said, his occupation probably holds him back a bit. Sniper is on the younger side, being about 28 in game, which surprised me when I learned this. He's around the same age as Scout. It's kind of crazy. Doesn't look like it. So, he probably doesn't have any real back problems, knee problems, or anything like that. Besides when Spy tries to shank him, of course, but that's a problem every class has. Sniper has long legs, which means the range of motion is even greater. Now, if he doesn't lift sumo, then maybe he can lift a bit more than what I'm going to say, because sumo stance offsets leg length a little bit, but I don't imagine Sniper liking that position. Sniper can lift probably about 3 plates, or 315 pounds. This is very much achievable by a guy of his stature even with his occupation. Sumo, he may be able to get 335 or 340 pounds, but I'm going to leave it at 315 for this. Oof, man, that one was a long one. To wrap up, Sniper can squat 275 pounds, bench just a little bit over 200 pounds at 205 pounds, and deadlift in the weird frog stance 315 pounds, maybe Sumo 340, but I'm listing it at 315. To cap off the list, we have the sneaky Frenchman, Spy. Spy has to be agile, quick, and move in and out of cover. Though honestly, I doubt Spy really trains at all. If he does, it's minimal. Look at him, he's the scrawniest out of all classes, except maybe Scout, like father, like son. But even then, I think he takes the cake. Spy is above average height, being just a tad taller than Soldier, but a smidge under the height of Medic, at about 6 foot 1 or so. Spy is not that big of a guy otherwise. Unlike Sniper, he has very skinny appendages, with there being no way that it's deceiving. Spy is unbelievably slender, which makes sense for his occupation. He has to be able to slip in and out of situations, and if you're a 225 pound behemoth, it's a lot harder to do that. How much does he weigh? I believe that he weighs a bit more than Scout, but less than Engineer, even with his height. Spy is probably around 160 pounds. But let's not waste any more time. Here are the lifts. Squat. <laughs> yeah, 
The Spy used the bar as a working set, which is okay by the way, any progress is good. Like I stated, Spy's legs are unbelievably slender, just like the rest of his body. There is no mass there. It is just skin and bone, nothing else. I feel like Spy would be capable of lifting a little bit more than body weight, just like anybody who's decently physically fit. But, I mean, that much is certain, not much else. He is the weakest physical class out of all of them for sure, so I'm just going to make the wild guess here and say that Spy from TF2 can squat 225 pounds or two plates, though it could be as low as 160 pounds or body weight. I'm going to leave it at 225 for now. The Bench. This one is going to be a massacre. I truly believe Spy is the only class besides maybe Scout that cannot at least bench his body weight. He doesn't really have to, but I'm pointing it out. Spy's occupation doesn't require him to be all that strong physically. None of his kit is really big. It's not like he holds a big rifle. I mean, the thing that weighs the most in his kit is maybe the Sapper, which is at most 2 pounds, 3 pounds. So, he likely doesn't bench or really do any sort of upper body exercises. Now, I believe any man, without some sort of disability that doesn't allow for it, can at least bench a plate with just standard muscle insertions and whatnot. So I'm going to be generous and say he can bench a plate and a two and a half for a grand total of 140 pounds. Finally, the deadlift. Spy has a build that is not good for any lift. I know I said Sniper has a deadlift build, but snipers aren't chronically skinny like Spy is. Maybe it's all them cigarettes, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to spend long on this. Spy has weak legs, a weak upper body, and he has decently long arms. So I'll just say Spy can deadlift just under 300 pounds at 295. Spy is on the older side, and I don't know how his back is doing, but he seems pretty agile even as age. So I'm going to say that Spy has no medical problems that would stop him from performing a deadlift. That's it. Yeah, Spy's section is pretty short, pretty uninteresting. Here are the numbers. He can squat 2 plates or 225 pounds, bench 140 pounds, and deadlift 295 pounds. Whoa, you've done it. You reached the end of the video. Thank you for watching through. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm curious, what, what do you guys think about this? Do you think I got these right, or was I way off base? Tell me in the comments. Give me your corrections that you would make if you were to judge how much you think the mercenaries of TF2 can lift. Heck, even put your own personal PRs down there. You know, the gym community is strong. Just for fun, here's the original tier list I made that gave me the inspiration for this video in the first place. I'll just leave them up for a second. If you want to pause, you can kind of look at it. I've changed some things around, and obviously in this video, I uh, went for more exact answers rather than, you know, the ranges for this tier list. And then also here are all the nine class descriptions if you want to pause and compare. Anyway, thank you all for clicking on this video and I will catch you later.